Hello. In this video, we're going to go through an exercise that was used in my grade 12 class. It was a quick one, just to check to make sure students understand that, understood pardon me, the concept of classes. So what we're going to do here, and I'm reading right from the page, is write a class lock that could be used to create electronic lock objects. Each lock may be in either an open, unlocked, or closed lock state, and each one is protected by its own integer key, which must be used to unlock it. The class should contain the following methods. Um, public lock int, so that's the constructor. So we see we need to pass it an integer, a key value, which represents the unlock key. Public void close, which closes the lock. Public boolean is open, um, and that's going to open the lock, or sorry, that's going to return if the lock is open or closed. And then another method called open, which takes a single parameter called key. Um, so the, remember, when we're designing an object, what we want to think about are two things. We want to think about um, what are called attributes and behaviors. So the question here, if I was des I'm designing this, is what are the attributes and what are the behaviors? So the behaviors are actually given to us because behaviors are simply methods. So we need to have those three, those four methods. So let's do that quickly. Um, public lock int key. Um, public void close. We don't know what this is going to do yet. Public boolean is open. And so let's just for now, so we don't have an error, let's return true for now. And public void open, and, and it takes some key value. So if we think about well, what kind of attributes is our lock go object going to need? Well, it's going to need um, some way to remember what the key code is. So we're going to need some integer value to to store the code. And then we have we have to know if it's unlocked or locked. So we can store that as a boolean. So we need a boolean and we'll call that boolean is locked. Um, and then if we take a read down here of the open method, open the lock if and only if the parameter key matches the own lock key. If the lock is closed and the keys do not match, count the failed attempts. So we need some way to keep track of how many times someone has tried to open this lock. So we're going to need an integer counter. So those are the three fields I need with this method, sorry, with this class. So I'm going to make private int code. And remember, we want to use good programming practices. So we have to encapsulate everything. So those are my fields. So in my constructor, when I construct the lock, if we take a look, we want to create a lock that is initially open. So the code is going to equal to whatever key is passed. And is locked, if it's open, is going to be false. Now we could say CTR equals zero, but remember, since all, all primitive types get sorry all primitive types get set if they're not manually set CTR would be set to zero and actually my apologies we want this to be in it so now we have this void close so we need to close the lock so that simply means is locked is going to be set to true that's all we need to do now we need is open so we want to return true if open. We want to return false if closed. So one way to do this is to check the state of is locked. So we can say if is locked is equivalent to false. So meaning if, if it's open, then we return true because it's open else we return false. 
So this would work, but let's talk about a couple ways we could make this code a little bit, a little bit um, tighter. First thing we could do is we, we don't have to actually compare booleans. It will do it. The computer will actually know if we put a boolean there to check if this is true. But we want to go in here if it's false. So what we're going to do is say if not locked. Now this will work as well. What we notice that what we should what we could notice is that if is locked is false, we want to return true. And if is locked is true, we want to return false. So we're returning the reverse of is locked. So what I could do is I could simply say return is locked and then put a not in front of it, which is going to invert the sign. So if is locked is true, it will return false. If is locked is false, it will return true. So now we want to write the open method. So what we need to do is um, if key is equivalent to the code, so that's checking if the key the person passes is equivalent to the code, then, well, what do we want to do? We want to set is locked to false because now it's open. Else, well, we have to keep track. So if there's been a, a guess and it's incorrect, CTR is equal to CTR plus one. And now what we're going to check is if CTR is equivalent to three, we're going to output alarm. So now if I output alarm, now what I need to do is remember CTR is still counting. So after I've output alarm, I have to reset CTR to zero. So let's expand this here and let's save. So good thing we have no errors. So now if I go to lock runner, don't mind this constructor here. I was playing around just kind of trying a couple things. So now let's test lock runner. If this works correctly, what we're going to do is we're going to use that class, which is the template to create an instance of lock called lock one. Then we're going to create an instance of lock called lock two. And remember, both of these locks should be initially set to being opened. So is locked is false. Then we're going to close both the locks. And then we're going to output lock one is open. So since lock one is actually closed, this should return false. We're going to try an attempt on lock one to open it. We're going to try an attempt on lock one to open it again, but fail again. We're going to try to open lock two with the passcode 222, and that's successful. Then we'll try and open lock one with passcode 789, at which point this is our third attempt, and we'll print alarm. And then we'll try to open lock one with code 111, and it should work. So if I run this, we get false because lock one is in fact not open. And we get an alarm because we've had three attempts to open lock one. So again, in the process of working through this little task, what's really important is when you're designing a class is to remember that a class is creating a blueprint to create instances of the object. So we always need to think about if we were to create an object of the class's type, what are the attributes, which will be represented as fields, and what are the behaviors? So with the line lock, lock one equals new lock, one, 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 what that does is it creates a lock object in memory and it points to where the information is. In our case, we have one int, one boolean, and another int. So this is int is the code, this boolean is the is locked, and then we have an integer which is a CTR. I hope that helped.